Hello everyone and welcome back, I am your host Elias Arantopoulos and welcome to a new tutorial using Adobe Illustrator on iPad. Today I will teach you how to draw a couple of different shapes and use the radial repeat function inside Adobe Illustrator on iPad to create an ornamental design and complete a mini project. Alright, so let's go ahead and start this off inside Adobe Illustrator on the iPad. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new document. So on the bottom left, I'm going to tap where it says create new. And then under the print presets, I'm going to choose an A4 and specifically I'm going to tap on the down arrow key to switch to the landscape. And instead of untitled, maybe we can rename this to radial repeat. Tap OK and then tap to create. There we go. Okay, great. So the first thing I'm going to do is bringing a photo so I'll be able to see and draw exactly what I'm going to repeat. So on the left side, we've got the toolbar. So I'm going to tap on the important button here and tap on the photos. I'm going to choose one of my photos here. There we go. And of course, the second thing I'm going to do here is to bring down the opacity of this photo. So we can do this in a couple of different ways. We can use the common actions below to bring down its opacity. All right, so keep swiping to the left or on the right side on the taskbar, I can use the properties at the very bottom. I can adjust the opacity as well from here. Whatever works for you, either or will do the same. All right, so let's say I like this opacity. Under the layer one here, I'm going to swipe to the left to get to the T icon to rename this to photo, tap OK. And then I'm going to tap on the lock icon so I don't accidentally move it. Then I'm going to tap on the plus icon to create a new layer. And I'm going to pinch to zoom in and I'm just going to start drawing the very first element here, which is kind of darker uh, shade of gray. So for that, I'm going to tap on the rectangle tool. I'm going to long press to get to the ellipse tool. And I'm going to start drawing now. A couple of ways how to do this. You can just start drawing this right to get a circle. You can also tap on the primary touch shortcut. That will create a perfect circle. But let me undo this for a second. If I tap and hold and I get to the secondary, touch shortcut, I can draw this from the center. And I kind of like this more, to be honest with you. So I'm going to use that. And I'm going to swap between fill and stroke. So for stroke, I'm going to go for a black color. I believe that seems to be OK. Maybe I can size this up. Again, I'm going to use the secondary touch shortcut to just bring this out just a bit and then just position it in the center, right? Great. You can also inside the properties panel, you can double check your work and see the width of the circle is 82 plus something points. You can adjust this from here too. But I'm showing you this because you know that it's a perfect circle. Great. So I'm going to take that and under the common actions, I'm going to tap on the duplicate icon here to duplicate the artwork and we can see this inside the layers panel that we have two ellipses. So I'm just going to drag this down. Great. And then again, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to go for the secondary touch shortcuts and I'm going to size this down from the center. Bring this down in position like so. Great. All right. So now I'm going to switch to the direct selection tool and I'm going to tap to select this point here, the one with the blue dot, and I'm going to tap on the trash icon to remove it. I will do the same thing here. Tap on this top um, node here, the anchor point, and just remove it. And now I'm going to marquee select with the pencil tool here, those two and points and under inside the taskbar and under the path menu, I'm going to use the join path command. 
like so. You see now? And those two have been joined. I will do the same for the other two add nodes. There we go. Again, I'm going to use under the path menu, I'm going to use the join path command. And here we go. We've got a perfect shape here. The only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to swap between stroke and fill. There we go. And now we are ready for the magic. So in this case, I'm going to tap on the object, right? And inside the taskbar, um, the very last icon here, I'm going to tap on the repeat menu. And the first choice will be the radial repeat. So tap on that. And now the selected artwork is being repeated around the circle. So let's talk about how this thing works. Here we have several widgets for adjusting the space, which is this widget here. We have another widget for adjusting the number of times the artwork is repeated from this side widget. We can also adjust where the artwork starts and ends from this widget here. All right. Now to scale the repeat objects, we can drag one of the corners of the bounding box surrounding the repeat object and scale it proportionally. To edit the original artwork, we can double tap any of the artwork inside the circle. And as you can see, since this is a radial effect, it affects everything, all the rest of the shapes. And we can also move the repeat object into position by dragging any of the artwork inside the circle. All right, so in this case, I'm just gonna move it right in the center here. And I'm going to adjust the space. So I'm gonna drag this top widget, I'm gonna move it right there, right? And then I'm going to adjust the number of times the artwork is repeated from the side widget and you can see the number interactively. We can also do the same inside the properties panel, the very bottom, we can see here radio repeat and the number of times we repeat this. So interactively, I'm going to do this with 24 sides and as you can see those two numbers correspond to each other. Great, right? And that's about it actually on this one. Okay, we accomplished like the first wave. Now let's go back to the layers panel here and um, I'm going to actually, under the commons actions, I'm going to tap to duplicate this to create the smaller version. So first I'm going to toggle off the visibility of the first regular repeat and also lock it so I don't accidentally move it and then focus on this one. So the first thing I'm going to do is just have one and then let's see, um, under the object menu, I'm going to expand that because I actually want to start from the very beginning. So I'm going to bring this down here. And again, with the secondary touch shortcut, I'm going to size this down quite a bit. I need to size this down even more. I think that looks okay. Let me see the relationship between those two. There we go. Same story, tap on that. Tap on the repeat menu and go for the radio repeat. Uh, and I'm just going to place this right in the center. There we go. And again, we're going to adjust the space from this top widget. Perhaps around there. Increase the size to 24, of course. There we go. And I like that as well. The only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this slightly. So under the properties here, I'm going to rotate this interactively to perhaps this. Let's look at the other one too. There you go. And this is exactly what I was going for. So this is great. And we are ready to go to the very next step. All right, so let's go ahead and continue this and create another radial repeat. So for that, I'm going to tap on the plus icon to create a new layer, which is layer three. I'm going to toggle off the visibility of layer two and lock it so I don't accidentally move it. Tap on the photo. I want to increase its opacity. So at the bottom of the common actions, I'm going to bring this 
out to the slide this to the right a bit to increase its opacity. Lock this photo layer again, tap on the layer three, pinch to zoom in, tap and hold and to get to the rectangle tool. And all I'm gonna do is here is just tap and drag to create one rectangle, like so, okay? Now I'm going to swap between fill and stroke because I wanna be able to see what I'm doing, all right? So I'm going to pinch the zoom in here and I'm going to use the direct selection tool. Mark you select those left, this left anchor point and with the primary touch shortcut pressed, going to bring this in. I'm going to mark you select this one, right? An anchor point on the right. Again, with the primary touch shortcut pressed, I'm going to bring this in too. All right. And then mark you select this two endpoints and then bring up the corner radius. So we have a perfect corner here, right? Looks great. Let's go ahead and focus on the very top here. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap on the pen tool and then just tap once to create an additional anchor point right in the center here. Back on the direct selection tool, bring this out. And you know, another thing you can do is you can just mark you select those two anchor points. And inside the properties, we can just adjust the, the Y axis. You see that? So, you can also do that, and we have a more pointy endpoint here. There we go. You can also do that. Now I'm going to swap between stroke and fill. There you go. I believe this is ready for us. Just make sure that it's centered. And let's go back to the layers. No need to see the photo. I'm just going to actually, I need that. I'm just going to bring this back to something. Okay, just to have a reference here again. Lock this one, back on layer three. Let's tap on the repeat menu, tap on the radial repeat. Let's move it to the center. I'm going to tap on the top widget to adjust the space. All right, and and then all I'm going to do is, of course, on the side widget, I'm going to adjust the number of times the artwork is repeated back to 24, right? I believe that's okay. Maybe I can just adjust this a bit. And then inside the properties, all I'm going to do is I'm going to play around with the rotation. And let's see. I'm between seven and eight, bring back to seven. We can also do this. We can go to 7.5. See that? We can also do that. So I like what I see. Let's see that in relation to layer two, and that's pretty good. Now, another thing we can do is perhaps, perhaps, okay, just size this down a bit. So secondary touch shortcut, just slightly sussy down, like so. All right, and I believe things are looking good and we're ready to go to the next step. All right, so for the next step, again, I'm going to create a new layer. Let's go ahead and lock everything so we don't accidentally move anything. And I'm going to focus to create those circles here. So again, I'm gonna long press to get to the ellipse tool. And on layer four, I'm going to have the secondary touch shortcut here and just tap and drag to create a circle as such. Bring this to the center. And I'm going to duplicate this. So tap on the duplicate here. And let's see, I'm going to size this down. So again, I'm going to touch the, I'm going to use the secondary touch shortcut. I'm going to bring this in perhaps even more. Okay, great. Now select the whole layer and under the combined shapes, I'm going to use the second Boolean operation, which is the minus front. And here we go. See that? That easy. So again, I'm going to 
use the ellipse tool and call create. Let me undo this here for a second. I don't want to have anything selected, right? Let's do this again. There we go. I'm going to center this. Make sure this is centered too. And that's about it on this end. So for the next one, all I'm going to do is go ahead and color the artwork. All right, so let's go ahead and continue this for the last step to color the artwork, to color this ornamental design. So for that, I'm going to tap on the plus icon to create a new layer. And let's see, let, I'm going to make sure that everything else is locked. Just going to focus on layer five. So I'm going to long press to get to the rectangle tool. And I'm just going to tap and drag to create a rectangle. Then I'm going to swap between fill and stroke. And I'm going to use the selection tool to make sure this is all the way across the canvas. All right. Great, let's switch back again, switch back to from stroke to fill. And I'm going to use one of my libraries here that I've created earlier. It's called Ready to Repeat. I'm going to use this color, all right? So for the layer five, I'm going to tap and hold and bring this under layer two. Um, swipe to the left to rename this to BG for background. I'm going to lock this layer, all right? And now let's go ahead and focus on the rest of the layers. So for example, this one here can have maybe a color of that. This ready to repeat can have perhaps a white color. This one here can maybe have a yellow color to it or yeah, like so. And I'm just gonna play around with colors as you can see here. I'm not doing anything important. Just play around to see what works for me. Something along those lines. Now, the last thing we remain to do is, everything else is locked, right? I'm going to marquee select everything with the selection tool. And then holding the secondary touch shortcut, I'm going to size everything down from the center to get a little bit of breathing space all around and I believe we are ready to go. So here it is, folks, an example of Ready Repeat inside the Adobe Illustrator for the iPad. Thank you, everyone, for spending time with me. Let me know if you have any questions below the comments section. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and share the knowledge.